Hey y'all, Chirp here. Um, hold on. Let me put these headphones in so y'all can hear me. All right. There we go. All right. So, hello all. I'm coming to you today or tonight rather to uh, study, speak, and read the seven hermetic principles to you guys via the cabal. I don't even know if you can see this shit. It's backwards. But it says, can y'all see this? Can y'all read it? The Kabbalion. Okay. Um. Okay, so. You probably can see it. You probably can't. But it's a book. I'm trying to see if y'all can see this shit up close. I know y'all can see it up close. The Kai. K-Y-B-A-L-I-O-N. The Kabbalion. Okay. Um. Is written by the three her initiates. Okay, so this the Kabbalion dates back to Hermeticism, um, stemming from Hermes Trismegistus, also known as Thoth in Egyptian times, and then was given the name Hermes by the Greeks, and you know how all that shit go. So basically, Egyptian knowledge. Now, this book deals with um, the mind, uh, mental principles, how to navigate from a your higher self and your higher mind, so higher thinking, higher learning, different shit like that, all right? So, um, let's see. The first principle. So, there are seven hermetic principles. We're going to go through them. It's only about 10 pages. So, the first principle is the principle of mentalism, okay? Um, the principle of mentalism starts off the all is mind, the universe is mental. This principle embodies the truth that all is mind. It explains that the all, which is the substantial reality underlying all of the outward manifestations and appearances, which we know under the terms of the material universe, the phenomena of life, matter, energy, and in short, all that is apparent to our material senses is spirit. So it's saying it explains that the all is spirit, which in itself is unknowable and undefinable, but which may be considered and thought of as a universal, infinite, living mind. It also explains that all the phenomenal world or universe is simply a mental creation of the all subject to the laws of created things and that the universe as a whole and in its parts or units has its existence in the mind of the all in which mind we live and move and have our being. This principle by establishing the mental nature of the universe easily explains all of the very mental and psychic phenomena that occupy such a large portion of the public attention. Once again, this principle by establishing the mental nature of the universe easily explains all of the very mental and psychic phenomena that occupy such a large portion of the public attention and which without such explanation are non-understandable and defy scientific treatment. An understanding of this great hermetic principle of mentalism enables the individual to readily grasp the laws of the mental universe and to apply the same to his well-being and advancement. The hermetic student is enabled to apply intelligently the great mental laws instead of using them in a haphazard manner. With the master key in his possession, the student may unlock the many doors of the mental and psychic temple of knowledge and enter the same freely and intelligently. This principle explains the true nature of energy, power, and matter, and why and how all of these are subordinate to the mastery of mind. One of the old hermetic masters wrote long ages ago, He who grasps the truth of the mental nature of the universe is well advanced on the path to mastery. And these words are as true today as at the time they were first written. Without this master key, mastery is impossible, and the student knocks in the vein at the many doors of the temple. So that is mentalism, guys. So basically, um, understanding that your mind, okay, is everything. Oh, can y'all see me in this holographic universe that I am in? All right. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So basically what that's saying is... Um, the principle of mentalism, knowing that the universe is mental. Everything here is mental. That's why when we say uh, operate from, I love my hands, operate from your higher self, operate from your mind, get control of your mind because the mind is all, okay? Um, 
you create things from your mind and then bring it into mental, I mean, bring it into a physical, okay, fruition. So everything comes from the mind, my nigga. Get your mind together. Okay, the second principle is the principle of correspondence. As above, so below, so below, as above, okay? This principle embodies the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and phenomena of the various planes of being and life. The old hermetic axiom ran in these words, as above, so below, as below, so above. And the grasping of this principle gives one the means of solving many a dark paradox and hidden secret of nature. There are planes beyond our knowing, and when we apply the principle of correspondence to them, we are able to understand much that would otherwise be unknowable to us. This principle is of universal application and manifestation on the various planes of the material, mental, and spiritual universe. It is a universal law. The ancient Hermeticists considered this principle as one of the most important mental instruments by which man was able to pry aside the obstacles which hid from view the unknown. Its use even tore aside the veil of Isis to the extent that a glimpse of the face of the goddess might be caught. Just as a knowledge of the principles of geometry enables man to measure distant suns and their movements while seated in his observatory, so a knowledge of the principle of correspondence enables man to reason intelligently from the known to the unknown. Studying the monad, he understands the archangel. So it's just that correspondence. I mean, that principle explains like as above, so below. So what is happening here is also happening here is what it's saying. Okay. So everything is, it's an equal, it's a balance, it's a duality. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of something else where it, where it's like the whole as above, so below axiom. Okay. But I think y'all get what I'm saying. Everything, every action has a reaction. Okay. So you can't do something without something else following in behind it. All right. So, um, next we have the third principle of vibration or well, the third principle, uh, which is the principle of vibration. Nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates, everything is moving. I'm going to talk about that after I finish reading this. This principle embodies the truth that everything is in motion, everything vibrates, nothing is at rest. Facts which modern science endorses and which each new scientific discovery tends to verify. And yet this hermetic principle was enunciated thousands of years ago by the masters of ancient Egypt. This principle explains that the differences between different manifestations of matter, energy, mind, and even spirit result largely from varying rates of vibration. From the all, which is pure spirit, down to the grossest form of matter, all is in vibration. The higher the vibration, the higher the position in the scale. The vibration of spirit is at such an infinite rate of intensity and rapidity that it is practically at rest, just as a rapidly moving wheel seems to be motionless. And at the other end of the scale, there are gross forms of matter whose vibrations are so low as to seem at rest. Between these poles, there are millions upon millions of varying degrees of vibration from corpuscle and, I mean, form, from corpuscle and electron, atom and molecule, to worlds and universes, everything is in vibratory motion. This is also true on the planes of energy and force, which are but varying degrees of vibration, and also on the mental planes whose states depend upon vibrations, and even on to the spiritual planes. An understanding of this principle with the appropriate formulas enables hermetic students to control their own mental vibrations as well as those of others. The masters also apply this principle to the conquering of natural phenomena in various ways. He who understands the principle of vibration has grasped the specter of power. I'm tripping. He who understands the, vib he who understands the principle of vibration has grasped the scepter of power, says one of the old writers. So what that is saying is everything is moving. Everything is vibrating. Everything is constantly moving. Like you see, I'm constantly moving. Even when I seem like I'm at rest, I'm moving, okay? So I can attest to that. Shit is moving. Um... If you ever did any hallucinogenic drugs 
or like LSD. LSD will show you that nigga, everything is moving. I'm talking about finite little details. It's shit. Everything in this room, this whole room is moving right now. But you wouldn't really understand that unless you unlock certain doors of your mind, the doors of perception, or if you took hallucinogenic drugs like LSD or mushrooms or DMT or some shit. But you'll see that everything is literally moving. Even solids. Like if you look at something that's a solid, it's moving. Ice appears to be solid, but it's moving so fast that it appears to be at rest. So basically that's what that's saying, okay? So that's the principle of vibration. The fourth principle, the principle of polarity. Everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet. All truths are but half truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. This principle embodies the truth that everything is dual. Everything has two poles. Everything has its pair of opposites, all of which were old hermetic axioms. It explains that old paradoxes that have perplexed so many, which have been stated as follows. Thesis and antithesis are identical in nature, but different in degree. Opposites are the same, differing only in degree. The pairs of opposites may be reconciled. Extremes meet. Everything is and isn't at the same time. All truths are but half truths. Every truth is half false. There are two sides to everything, etc., etc., etc. It explains that in everything there are two poles or opposite aspects, and the opposites are really only the two extremes of the same thing, which many varying degrees between them, with many varying degrees between them, I'm sorry. To illustrate, heat and cold, although opposites, okay, although opposites are really the same thing, the difference is consisting merely of degrees of the same thing. Look at your thermometer and see if you can discover where heat terminates and cold begins. There is no such thing as absolute heat or absolute cold. The two terms, heat and cold, simply indicate varying degrees of the same thing. And that same thing, which manifests as heat and cold, is merely a form, variety, and rate of vibration. So heat and cold are simply the two poles of that which we call heat. And the phenomena attendant, Thereupon are manifestations of the principle of polarity. The same principle manifests in the case of light and darkness, which are the same thing, the difference consisting of varying degrees between the two poles of the phenomena. Where does darkness leave off and light begin? What is the difference between large and small, between hard and soft, between black and white, between sharp and dull, between noise and quiet, between high and low, between positive and negative? The principle of polarity explains these paradoxes, and no other principle can supersede it. The same principle operates on the mental plane. Let us take a radical and extreme example, that of love and hate, two mental states apparently totally different. And yet there are degrees of hate and degrees of love, and a middle point in which we use the terms like or dislike, which shade into each other so gradually that sometimes we are at a loss to know whether we like or dislike or neither. And all are simply varying simply degrees of the same thing as you will see if you will but think a moment and more than this and consider of more importance by the hermeticist it is possible to change the vibrations of hate to the vibrations of love in one's own mind and in the mind of others many of you who read these lines have had personal experience of the involuntary rapid transition from love to hate and the reverse in your own case and that of others. Just like when you hear a song and you hate that shit, but then you automatically, all of a sudden, love it, okay? That vibration has changed your mind. Power. Power of that damn vibration. Okay. And you will therefore realize the possibility of this being accomplished by the use of the will, by means of the hermetic formulas, good and evil, are but the poles of the same thing, and the hermeticists understand the art of transmuting evil into good by means of an application of the principle of polarity. In short, the art of polarization becomes a phase of mental alchemy known and practiced by the ancient and modern hermetic masters. An understanding of the principle will enable one to change his own polarity as well as that of the others if he will devote the time and study necessary to master the art, mastering your mind, okay, and mastering polarity, 
learning to balance the shit and learning to balance really your mind because you have two hemispheres, the right brain, the left brain. You got to have balance because when you off balance, you either super right brain and not logical or super left brain and not creative. OK, or emotional, you know, so you have people who are very imbalanced. So the fifth principle comes the principle of rhythm. Everything flows out and in. Everything has its sides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. The rhythm compensates. This principle embodies the truth that in everything there is manifest of measured motion to and fro, a flow in, a flow and an inflow, a swing backward and forward, a pendulum like movement, a tide like ebb and flow, a high tide and low tide. Between the two poles, which exist in accordance with the principle of polarity described a moment ago. There is always an action and a reaction, an advance and a retreat, a rising and a sinking. This is in the affairs of the universe, suns, worlds, men, animals, mind, energy, and matter. This law is manifest in the creation and destruction of worlds, in the rise and fall of nations, in the life of all things, and finally in the mental states of man. And it is with this latter that the Hermeticists find the understanding of the principle most important. The Hermeticist has grasped this principle, finding its universal application, and have also discovered certain meanings to understanding and overcome its effect in themselves by the use of the appropriate formulas and methods. They apply the mental law of neutralization. They cannot annul the principle or cause it to seize its operation but they have learned how to escape its effects upon them to a certain degree, depending upon the mastery of the principle. They have learned how to use it instead of being used by it. In this and similar effects or similar methods consists the art of the hermeticist. The master of hermetics, the master of hermetics polarizes himself at the point at which he desires to rest and then neutralizes the rhythmic swing of the pendulum which would tend to carry him to the other pole. All individuals who have obtained, oh God, who have obtained or attained any degree of self-mastery do this to a certain degree, more or less unconsciously, but the master does this consciously and by the use of his will and attains a degree of poise and mental firmness, almost impossible of belief on the part of the masses who are swung backward and forward like a pendulum. That talks about people who are just living life and they don't have no control over their damn life. Society swings them back and forth. The media swing them back and forth. They have no mental stability and no mental control. They are weak. Okay. This don't even apply to their ass. So you have to understand the principle and the law of polarity. Okay. The law of rhythm. Okay. Everything moves back and forth, but you have to learn how to not be swayed back and forth by things so easily okay practice this this principle and that of polarity have been closely studied by the hermeticists and the methods of counteracting neutralizing and using them form an important part of the hermetic mental alchemy okay y'all the sixth principle the principle of cause and effect every cause has its effect every effect has its cause everything happens according to law chance is but a name for law not recognized There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. This principle embodies the fact that there is a cause for every effect, an effect from every cause. It explains that everything happens according to law, that nothing ever merely happens. Then there is no such thing as chance, that while there are various planes of cause and effect, the higher dominating the lower planes, still nothing ever entirely escapes the law. The hermeticists understand the art and methods of rising above the ordinary plane of cause and effect to a certain degree. And by mentally rising to a higher plane, they become causers instead of effects. Okay. That means that you are creating your situation. You are causing things to happen instead of being the effect, instead of having no fucking rule or jurisdiction or no power over the situations that you have in your life. You just the damn, you part of the damn effect. You just there. Okay. Learn to become a creator and a causer of certain situations, positive situations in your life. The masses of people are carried along. The masses of people are carried along obedient to environment 
the wills and desires of others stronger than themselves. So that we are talking about the sheeple, the sheep ass people in society. They are uh, the wills and desires of others stronger than themselves. Heredity, suggestion and other outward causes moving them about like pawns on a chessboard of life. But the masters rising to the plane above dominate their moods, characters, qualities and powers as well as the environment surrounding them and become movers instead of pawns. They help to play the game of life instead of being played and moved about by other wheels and environment. They use the principle instead of being its tools. The masters obey the causation of the higher planes, but they help to rule on their own plane. In this statement, there is condensed a wealth of hermetic knowledge let him read who can. I'm going to read that again. The masters obey the causation of higher planes, but they help to rule on their own plane. That means that when it's shit going on outside of your control, you allow it to happen, but you don't allow it to overtake you and make you have no power of how you react to shit but you control your own life but you don't sit here trying to control shit that's outside of your uh power okay last but not least the last uh principle is the principle of gender gender isn't everything everything has its masculine and feminine principles gender manifests on all planes this principle embodies the truth that there is gender manifested in everything the masculine and feminine principles ever at work. This is true not only of the physical plane, but of the mental and even the spiritual planes. On the physical plane, the principle manifests as sex. On the higher plane, it takes higher forms, but the principle is ever the same. No creation, physical, mental, or spiritual, is possible without this principle. An understanding of its laws will throw light on many, a subject that has perplexed the minds of men. The principle of gender works ever in the direction of generation, regeneration, and creation. Everything and every person contains the two elements or principles or this great principle within him, it, or her. Wait, let me reread that. Everything and every person contains the two elements or principles, male, female, or this great principle within it, him, or her. Every male thing has a female element also. Every female contains also the male principle. If you will understand the philosophy of mental and spiritual creation, generation, and regeneration, you must understand and study this hermetic principle. It contains the solution of many mysteries of life. We caution you that this principle has no reference to the many base, pernicious, and degrading lustful theories, teachings, and practices which are taught under fanciful titles and which are a prostitution of the great natural principle of gender. Such base revivals of the ancient infamous forms of phallicism tend to ruin mind, body, and soul, and the hermetic principle, or the hermetic philosophy, has ever sounded the warning note against these degrading teachings which tend to, which tend, let me reread that, the hermetic philosophy has ever sounded the warning note against these degrading teachings which tend toward lust, licentiousness, and perversion of nature's principles. If you seek such teachings, I mean, if you seek some old low vibration, nasty ass shit, you must go elsewhere for them. Hermeticism contains nothing for you along these lines. To the pure, all things are pure. To the base, all things are base. All right? So that is the seven, okay, uh, hermetic principles in the Kabbalion, okay? So just to recap on all these things, they all, in my opinion, are speaking on operating from a higher self, your higher self, your higher plane, your higher mind, higher thoughts, okay? Um, all of these, you have to understand them. Uh, but you can only understand them if your mind is at a certain vibratory frequency. Okay. If you low frequency, you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but I'm pretty sure that people who are reading this 
I'm not reading this, who's listening to this or who re- who has read the Kabbalion or is reading the Kabbalion or is thinking of reading it, um, your frequency is vibrating at a pretty high level because you are seeking out knowledge, okay? Um, so it's more to this book. I've only read, you guys, the, the seven hermetic principles, but it's other parts of this book that go more in depth with um, rhythm, okay, uh, mental transmutation, transformation, uh, gender, polarity, everything that I read to you, it goes more in depth. So I do suggest getting the book yourself and reading it. It's not a big book, if y'all can see that. It's not a lot, okay? It is, let's see how many pages. It's only 139 pages, so that's not a lot. You can read this in a day. You can read this in a few hours. Um, but yeah, those seven hermetic principles, if you read them more than once, you'll understand and find more information that you did not see the first time you read it or the second time you read it. Um, but really get a hold of your mind and the strength of the mind. I tell people the strength of the mind is the strongest strength of the body. And if you have control over your mind, you have control over a lot and you can also influence others. Okay. So there is some power in these words and in these uh, principles. All right. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if y'all need to find me, chirp.club. That is my website, chirp with three eyes.club. You can find me on Facebook, chirp with two eyes. Just type in chirp with two eyes, and it's a picture. My picture is me holding a white candle. Okay. Um, what else? You'll find me on Instagram, it's chirp with three eyes. I spell chirp with three eyes, but Facebook only let me put two. So uh, chirp with two eyes, three eyes, I'm sorry, chirp with three eyes on Instagram. You can find me, you know, chat it up. If you guys have any questions, um, you know, we're all teachers and students, my nigga. So y'all can teach me something, I can teach y'all something. But yeah, man, the Kabbalion, let me see. I can't even take this, uh, change myself out of holographic mode. Right now I'm in my higher self, okay? Um, but yeah, the Kabbalion, all right? And um, I'll holler at you guys later. Peace.